Welcome to another episode of the Bandwagon Podcast. And today uh, I'm joined by um, what I would say is if you're looking at if you're looking at UK Pangra in terms of uh, musicians and you kind of you're bringing together a band. I mean, this guy would be uh, might be one of the first names that you put down in there, considering his experience, um, his youthful looks. Uh, I'll just I'll just give him that give him that praise so far. So far. So Simon Tolley, welcome to the Bandwagon Podcast. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me, man. It's just a privilege to be on your show. It's just on your podcast. I've been watching these, like, well, so should I say this, people in case people get on YouTube, but whilst working from home, yeah. you're in the background. Hey, hey look, man, I'll I, I take anything. You know, if people are just watching this as well, you know, anytime. And, it's, you know, it's, it's mad because sometimes where people... Um, when you hear some people's habits of where they, they get in contact, they say, yeah, I'll do it when I'm, when I'm uh, looking after the kids or putting the kids to sleep or they're driving or, you know, at work or they're working in the background. Um, yeah. it, it's just mad because I do the same with other people's stuff. And, you know, when I listen to other podcasts or you're watching the show, I just need sometimes you need that kind of distraction or, you know, you might yeah, just yeah. you might just pick up one or two things. And, and, and I think these kind of podcasts or anything else is, is, is good for that kind of stuff. And that it is, it is, it's good. And it's just good to know what's happening and listen to other people's journeys. Because like when we meet um, on the road or meet in clubs and pubs or wherever, um, or at gigs and stuff, it's like normally like a high buy because mostly we're, we're there to work. And then, but it's nice to hear people's stories. Mm-hmm. And, it's like, and, it's good, man. And I think that, I think the, the last time I met you, I think we've seen each other quite a lot in the last few months. And I had seen you before that post, like, you know, during COVID, and obviously. But yeah, um, yeah. what I would say is that, you know, the, the greys have suited you really well. You actually you carry, so? Yeah, yeah. I, I think this this grey club is the is the way to go forward. I think it is. I think, um, it, well, I did, don't get last wedding season, I did have a little photo with Just For Men. And uh, I'm a go-to, but then I'm looking back at them pictures, and it just did not look real. It just looked like um, I've just come from Japan or something, you know. Like, was, it just looked fake, sort I, of thing. I got the ultimate bestie once, and it like um, I was with um, I think Frenzy just done this mix in it with the Siddu Musiala mix, and um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I hadn't been in any videos whatsoever, so I got kind of tricked to go there. And we were f- filming this in in Birmingham town centre, and. Uh, Guy was the guy directing it. He goes, Oh, uh, like, oh, we need a, co- a couple of bande to just go inside. And I was like, nah. They were like, Grab me in it. So I'm at, I'm at the front, um, you know, just the usual hands in the air, giving it loads in it. To nothing. It, it, was, it was just a laugh, it was a good vibe. And the guy goes, uh, Mate, you're gonna have to go at the back in it. So what do you mean? He goes, <laughs> it goes, You got you got gray hair, man. You're too old for this. shit. <laughs> I was like, Oh, go. What? Oh, it killed me. <laughs> and then, so if you if you ever get to see like the beginning, of it, I'm like I'm normal. And then I had to wear a cap. <laughs> I had to wear a cap. And then uh, I think from that day, I just I just knew that my time has been done, man. This How long's your hair been like that? Not that long. I think the easy answer to say is um, when I got married. <laughs> it, it was no, no. Um, I think in my mid twenties, you know, mid twenties, I had this little kind of. Yeah, this little kind of um little patch and then um okay then the like little streaks came through yeah um yeah. and then i think since when you have quite a kids or anything uh, yeah yeah my, my work ramped up at the same time so it, i think in a few areas of my life it just it just picked up pace and it just went all gray like my gra- my dad got gray after he took my granddad he got ill in india and he, my dad oh. went like black hair came back and he's just he was just gray so I think right. that that kind of switch just uh, just went really quickly. But um, yeah, I mean, I I think it looks all right on a blog, man. I don't I don't I don't agree that I see so I see the geezer today, and um, he's not in the industry as well. I'll just say I'll just say that um, he's picking up his kids, and he had a dot. He's got you know where he's got like it's silver and he's got the black beard around. Yeah, it, yeah. You know I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, mate, you're holding on, man. There's global warming going on there. You might as well just let it go. Just let it go. <laughs> let it go. Let it but go. Why? Yeah, I think, I think it looks good. Yeah, you know what? Sometimes when you look back on the videos and the photos, you think, oh, man, you need to do something there. But now it's just like, you know what? It's not about, it's just, just go with it. Yeah, go with the flow. What it, You know, looking back, you just said it. I remember one of your early videos was that you were in an old, either AS Ganga video or... Was that your first video that you were in? 
No, that was um, uh, there was a few videos before that. I think there's one with Sony at Wall. Yeah, because on the um, Sh- um, Shinda's um, album, I, f- I forgot what it's been. Uh, something tall it was, but I think Sony at Wall did a video and we filmed that in Mini Dollar Club. Uh-huh. Was it Tola Holly? No, it wasn't Tola Holly. Yes. Yeah, I think he might have been Tola Holly. I think Pinda Jack, Pinda Jack. Yeah, Pinda yeah, Jack kiss, uh, yeah, 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 and, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and a few other people. DJ Shake was that? Was he on it as well? Shinda and Shake. I don't think. I can't remember. Yeah, I think. I don't Maybe. Know, I know yeah. the cover. Black cover. All these ball players on it. Yeah, Tola Holly. But that AS Kong one, that era was um, yeah, that was just after Juani. Yeah. And then when John, I think Untouchables came out after that, I think. And then that's when I joined the band and we had to do that video shoot. It's weird we managed to shoot that was because I was actually working at, do you remember a store called Quick Save? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one in Hampton? Yes. No, no, no. This is here by Wolverhampton. Okay. So I was working at Quick Save and then I asked my, my, my boss, I need to leave about eight, nine o'clock. And he goes, where are you going? And he said, I said, I'll be back in a few hours. So I actually remember getting to the video shoot with my um, Quick Save uniform on. Yeah, I think it must have been about, I think, yeah, probably about 20, I think. And uh, <laughs> I remember putting my clothes on, doing this, uh, busting this video for a few hours and going back to quick save. <laughs> did, did you have to stay extra extra long or what? Was he all right? Yeah, with well, they was like shooting the uh, majority of the hours before I got there. And then days is hard because there's like no mobile phones and stuff, this at the other. You can't WhatsApp or text and this at the other. Yeah. Only certain people had a mobile phone. Mm. At that time, I think it was, um, uh, I think it was AS Gong Sun Mash at that time. So I remember like ringing from a payphone from QuickSafe or something. So I'm I'm did, did they say bring some food? <laughs> <laughs> there was enough food and drink when I got there. There was already a good one. And as you can probably good. tell in the video. Yeah, no, the it, there's, 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 there's a lot of dancing. There's a lot of smiling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I got there, they was all happy. But so then you, that, that song came out when the coronavirus happened, and then next week there was like a video going around so on WhatsApp, and I just remember getting loads of messages from everyone that somebody edited a song saying um, that Corona song. Sorry, to, uh, was it? I don't know. There's about uh, there's about fifteen Corona songs, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's uh, it's crazy. There ain't, there hasn't been a vaccine song. <laughs> there will be. <laughs> After this one, hopefully there will be. There will be. There will be one. There will so be one. Your, your journey to music then, how did that How did that start then? Um, um, DJ sort of basically, when I went to India, the first is, but the main thing is, like, obviously school, I think a lot of dollies probably just played, tapping their fingers on the tables and rules and pencils, if you sat there like yourself, you know what I mean? Dolly, and then getting into India to my cousin's wedding, them actually buying the door, I remember just playing on the juggle, just like, um, okay, what's going on here? I'm just going to have to um, have a jam. And my dad son was like, come on, just play around the bend with the juggle. And I, was, I was expecting like a little two-minute walk, three-minute mm-hmm. walk, yeah. which turned into like an hour. I never <laughs> had to touch at all anyway. So I'm walking around the bend, yeah, with all my family and stuff. Like, just went for it, really. And then I come back, started playing at a few family functions. Uh, I don't know if you heard of CB Disco's Ballon Reds yep. back in the day. And then I was at a family function and I just had my doll with me and just playing like, I think it was like a juggle entrance or something like that. And they were there and they said, oh, would you like would you like to play a doll with us? Like just for one, two songs. And I just remember playing, I think it was like Jeremy and Canal, something like that. I just played and it was like, wow, this is this is this is amazing. Like, you know, can we, have you got a telephone number? And then at that time, I think my just touch came out. Mugit Singh. Yeah. And then I remember they had like they had a green crayon. I remember this so clearly. And they're writing my mum and dad's telephone number uh, on the back of the LP. They were like LP days. And next minute I've got a phone call from them. So look, are you available Saturday? We've got a wedding in Bristol, we've got one in Luton, we've got one in London, and this is a blah 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 blah. And then I started doing gigs and being a roadie and just how old are you then then? At that time? I was probably about um 18. Yeah, so, there's just, not, so it's all self taught, no star or anything like yeah. that. Yeah, so basically, yeah, but back in the day, um, just growing up listening to like tapes, like obviously, suction this and that, so a lot of you know, he was like the you know, he's most dominant in, in the industry back then. I mean, and everybody, every sort of big albums were all produced by himself. 
so that happened and then basically um going to a wedding and watching like i think steve salter mentioned this like seeing a john mal for the first time without my singing and i thought well i've got to this guy's just amazing this is what i want to be doing and then watching performances on like um TV that Pongra Beat program used to come on and then just listen to um, tapes and CDs in uh, at home playing along them and that was it really and then next week now I started playing with DJ I think that's where I got a lot of my stamina from with the DJs and stuff I did and just so- j- just on that bit yeah because of like you 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 you've just you've just touched on it at this point the difference of playing along uh, an instrument, especially uh, when you've got a tape and doing a solo performance, is completely different. It's 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 that kind. Of, it's a different kind of fitness. Would you agree or disagree with that? Yeah, no, nah, like it's totally totally different because there's no stopping there, and that BPM and that beat's going. So you know you you just got to keep playing. So with the DJ, like nowadays you see, uh, like you know sometimes you see door players playing with DJs, but then they'll be dropping more delicates and thore rather than straight beats mm. i don't know if you ever noticed that as well and like i've been to a few functions where only certain tour players or sort of tour teams will just go with the beat and like um i think nobody's really bothered about how good or technical you are because them days are gone they just the dance floor just wants to keep to the beats and to have that stamina to play to what's actually performed on the actual track uh, with it playing alongside a DJ. Obviously, people have got their own sort of DJ sets and people can break beat between mixes and this, that, the other, which is great. I'm not, you know, I'm not against all that, but sometimes there have been occasions when I think, come on, man, um, don't stop, keep it going, sort of mm. thing. Because yeah. back in our days, like, if you stop if you stop playing, then you get a dirty look from the DJ. Yeah, I, do. I had a very dirty look from... Uh... Uh, actually, yeah, but that sentence sounded a bit dodge. But uh, anyway, uh, the uh, uh, yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely see the the, the new gen um, have a lot more technical ability where they concentrate on like delicates and all those. So delicates for everyone listening in and not having a bloody clue what we're talking. About. Those are the kind of the roles in the, in a lot of the songs that you kind of hear where they're dividing little bits up in a, in a track. Um, really difficult. I think back in the day you could get away with knowing one and just being all right with the, yeah, with, the yeah. with the rest of the beats. But now you see some of these guys who are soft taught and the phenomenal in terms of some of the the talent out there. But yeah. there, there's a compensation it for it from the other side. Did you notice that when you went into a band though as well? Yeah, when I went to the band, it's a totally different ball game because you start playing there. There's no other. There's nothing behind you. Sometimes I'm very luckily. Uh, I play with bands like Monkey, then Suffrey Boys, and this at the other. Sometimes we used to have a timbali with a drum kit. You know what I mean? So we used to have that little bit of a backup. But like when things got, you know, started with other other bands and stuff like that. Door was the main beat. You see, on any wedding or any dance floor, you start playing door on a bungalow track. Um, it, it just doesn't work. It's like you, the singer stops singing and it just goes into an instrumental sort of thing. So you 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 alert you you played at all and you were successful in doing that in for your DJing and then um wh- how did you know to make the decision or how did you get approached to what was your first band that you that you went into? Um, I think I think it was just just on the circuit DJing. Then went with like CBD Skulls and like Midland Boys. I don't know if you're Ranch. Yeah. Back in them days, I had like an album. So He's in Australia now, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. So he's a silver fox as well. He's like, the so. silver fox, and he's he's the <laughs> kind of uh, head leader. But he 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 was. Um, I think another guy doesn't get that much credit, to be honest. Especially yeah. at this point, you know, he was a phenomenal kind of uh, DJ at that time. Set a lot of high standards as well. Um, yeah, excellent DJ. This is rig and everything else, and just like everything that he did. I mean, don't get me wrong, CB were fantastic. They, they had the TV screens and this that the other door players, a lot of DJs. But but with Midland Boys, it was different because they actually produced an album. And they like you know had body body called Kiwai, but you did pass out and Basaki and all that. So they did an album and they started doing all the daytime shows. And we used to go with them to play at all like, all these daytime shows. So me and my mate, like another guy called Jason, he's at Dolly as well, back in the day. And like we was like like local Dolly celebrities, man, on all these daytimers. And we just like we used to just get to the front of the queue with two doors without door cases. Is that Imperial in Palace? Yeah, everywhere there was like a first base in Wolverhampton and loads of places. Dudley, this at the other Birmingham, a few there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leicester, we did hangers and all did that. You, uh, in your, is there any? Do you uh, recall any interesting stories from any of those daytimers? Oh, loads, loads of interesting stories. 
we can only <laughs> well, this, this thing's recorded and it's going to be on YouTube so I'm going to be careful what I say and who one day drops it's but fine now Every, everyone's married home. all I remember <laughs> is getting home before half past five or quarter to six and just pretending I'm been to school <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't know if I've I can't remember if I've I've told this story, but I remember a, a teacher from a from a school um, landing at a daytimer and uh, finding their their own students and, and and giving them a slap on the way out. <laughs> oh my god! Terrible. Yeah, 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 I think a few people might work out after this, but I I always <laughs> I, I think I always I always remember that. Um, but that content, I think Jet Jack Powell did like every Imperial Palace gig ever. Yeah, Jet, he was busy because he did an album as well. So, like, yeah, it was thing, he was like, yeah, yeah. So, he started, he did an album. But, yeah, from there, then going, I, I got approached then from, um, I've got Bally Gill, Bally from Scope Events. And then he called my house, that he got num- my number from someone. And then that crayon, that LP. Yeah. So, I don't know how that happened through, through someone of someone. And then next week, no, because back in the days when I was DJing, we used to do like um, school bands as well. Like I used to play with a band in Warsaw, a band in like um, with our mates here in Darleston back in the day. And like we just were just got around like some kids are just doing like, like you know, setting up a band and this at the other and just word got out. And then he gave me a call and he said, look, I've got, we're, we're working in a, but we work with Aista, you know, Manny Kara. And then he just says, look, can you come to the house? There's a studio, there's a house, it's going to be rehearsing. Just went down with my dad and did a rehearsal. And next week, no, joined the band, did a few years with themselves, and then just went from there, really. And then, uh, so how old were you then? How old were you then? This was, must be, it was actually um, around 18 time because I remember I had my 18th birthday party at home. Um, A few of the members of the band, I used to come to my house. So it's all around the six, uh, 16, 17, 18 area where it all started. What, so what, was all... The, what was the biggest lesson that you learned at that time? Because obviously, like you said, in terms of it was a completely, completely different kind of environment in terms of what you were learning um, yeah, and, yeah. and performing. But what was, the, what was the biggest lesson? I think for me, it's like joining a band was so hard because it was like, when you're playing with a DJ, the track's there, it's already there, the vocal's already there. But when you're playing with a live band and you know, a team, we've got to work together. A singer's doing this, you know, his job, I've got to do my job on door, um, door player's got to do his job and all that gelling and stuff. So when I started doing that jamming there, started playing, and I thought, you know what, this is this is the next level now of your playing. And if you can do this, then you know you can go into bigger things or different things with other artists then go on to recording which is what I wanted to do so I wanted the mm. DJ I wanted to do the live scene then I wanted to do a bit of recording a feature on some albums and it's it sort of I don't know maybe as in the maybe the journey was just I was at the right place at the right time and stuff and it worked out really well I know you left that band then I'm guessing of what, what, how come that why did that come come to a close uh, yeah so basically from there then it was uh, again with that journey went to Avatar Mania so I think everybody knows Avatar Mania and obviously you know Avatar Mania but then he was quite busy on the scene then and then I've just got um, I think Bally went to um, Avatar and sort of said Simon I'm taking you with me sort of thing and then <laughs> we ended up there and then did a few years on the road with Avatar oh, with Avatar Tom Mania he was so busy with like um, weddings and stuff and club gigs and uh, he was like he was like obviously because everybody sort of compared him to Club Eat Marnik and stuff and um, he just had like so many shows, and people what was liked he, that. Like, the guy, like uh, I recently saw him. Um, he, he did like a couple of comeback kind of g- uh, gigs yeah, yeah. as well. And you could, he is an absolute whirlwind on the stage. You know, like yeah. The, yeah. You know, like you can see the force of nature. And and I and I think he doesn't. I think he does, and he does. Like in terms of if you're looking at having a chronological history of. UK Bangla, the the significance of a couple of the people who you've been in the bands with, uh, mm-hmm. I think it needs to be kind of appreciated more. What was the experience like with him, especially um, even away from the away from the band? And just with after he was just like we had a really really close relationship because number one, I'm a huge fan of Kuldeep Manik as well. So my upbringing has always been listening to Kuldeep Manik. So I just for I remember when um, the Maniac was on the scene, we got door blasters, and he had his own like. Um, um, folk it and everything else I was like a huge fan of himself and then just working with him was just like this guy's just you know 
he's just the guy's too dangerous and he's like he screams and he's got so much aggression but then off stage it's just like um it was like we had this like joke we called each other father son sort of thing it's really yeah. weird <laughs> and, like, the, like, and i was like all right dad after joke because i was so young and stuff and he's always looking out for me this at the other and like just just little things even in the van and stuff like that he'll go and He'll, he'll load the stuff with us. He'll help us and everything. It was, it was like a team with his band. And like everybody, then after the gig, we'll go, you know, we'll go and grab, grab a munch. But we spent so much time together and like even rehearsals. Every every week, we'd always do like a rehearsal on Friday, seven o'clock. And I know people go out, don't they, on a Friday? Yep. He was like, he was like Friday, seven o'clock. We used to always be at the studio at rehearsal rooms and just seven till about nine ish. But you know what? We've, we put a lot of effort in with himself were you with him at the at his kind of peak within the uk or just yeah. slightly after then and then how did, how did you feel how did you think he kind of dwindled away that 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 that, that side i think from from my sort of thing because i sort of after everything was going well and this at the other then i sort of went to from um maniac to i'm sure it was mulkeet singh i think one of them I remember the the, the um, order now, but it was monkeys, and then I think Raju came with us. Raju, bass player, rest in peace, and and Bali, and then Harry was with Mulkeed, and then suddenly Maniac's band was just like there was new changes there. So, and I think some of the bookings didn't come the way because all the singers were t- sort of taking over, sort of thing. Mm. And I don't know. Then it's just sort of. Was there pressure on the band? I, I mean, I only kind of asked this question because, especially nowadays, when you, when you see people do um, work in any kind of work that you got to do, if you don't adapt, you die almost. Mm. Was it was it a case of that stuff happening back then um, that the band or the sound wasn't adapting to what people were wanting? Or what it is, you got to everything that you're releasing has got to be it's got to be on level. On par, because in yeah. them days, you know, you got you, you got your Sufris, you got Mukid Singh, everybody else, you know, like DCS, you got big bands, and you needed to be on that sort of level. As soon as you did a few few albums and it wasn't on that level, sort of thing, then you sort of you, the interest and the you know you know what the audience and market is like now. Just imagine, like you know, twenty years ago. But would you would you be like you're obviously one of the younger ones in the in the in the mm. band? Reason why I, I always have an interest in musician stuff. I think they're some of the best people who can document and be historians in terms of giving this out. And I also think in terms of uh, Omen Hayes said it about the the inspiring the next generation. That doesn't mm. necessarily it, it's hard to pin down. It is, and I think these kind of stories in terms of what you're saying, mm-hmm. um, you know, might be that kind of in inverted indirect advice if somebody is thinking of going down there because you never you never if you fail to adapt to an environment i think you're stumped yeah yeah i think the other thing is okay the material the product is a product as well yeah but well, sometimes you can have performances that are not going to be on par with another performance of another band or another artist or well, that could be to lack of uh, material maybe or it could be uh, the actual qualities as well from it's like a football team like you got your Liverpools and you got your you know Man City's and you know your Chelsea's this is that the other yeah, and like I, you, I know it's yeah you mentioned Man United you know what's that all about <laughs> <laughs> okay go on I'll give you the shout as well yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, that's but, fine <laughs> you can't cut that bit out now no no but, no um, <laughs> But you know what I'm saying? It's like mm. it, 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 it's like football. You know, you know, you get your players, you, you players in a team, and they're not feeling it with this club. And then you know what? Okay, I'm gonna, I need to be going to moving on to bigger and better things. But that's not saying that I'll, I'll totally disrespect when I'm leaving now. So I left Maniac. I'm going on to bigger things. What I wanted to do because I wanted to go international, and I wasn't getting that opportunity with. Yeah. Um, um, maniac in them days, and because it was very UK based, and the the audience was very UK um, targeted, and like you know the the actual material that was releasing in the UK was going to UK where you got other artists, which such as your um, Geeds and Sufis, were worldwide. You know that went to America, Canada, Australia, this that the other, Dubai, Pakistan, everywhere, India, and for me, I thought you know what I want. I'm young. 
um, before I want to settle down on family and everything else. I want to see the world, mm. and I want to I want to take my my art, my instruments, and be in that tour life. Because used to hear stories from other musicians. Uh, I said, you know what? I want a bit of this now. I want to get on a plane. I want to get that fragile sticker on my door case. I want to get to. <laughs> I want. I want to be going to a gig in the UK with fifteen fragile stickers with different uh, <laughs> their airlines on. Thinking, well, you've been there, where you've been there. You know, it was just one of those things, and mm. it's just like, again, luckily it worked out for me. Like, touch wood there, but it did. You said earlier that you had that father son relationship, that joke going on there. Was it an easy conversation to have with him to say, "Look, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm leaving." Yeah, I think he, I think he sort of knew as well because, like, as I said, I wanted to do a bit more. It's like now to this day, I could still phone him tomorrow and say, "Good dad, dad," and he'll just burst out laughing, "Oh, good dad, boy," you know. Mm. That's how it is. Mm. It's like Steve's as well. We, we're talking to Steve's house where he's like pre-party, and um, <laughs> we just had a, we just had a blast there. You know, he's only meant to sing for about 20 minutes, which turned into a, like, two hours set. Yeah, both and him and Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's true, it's true, but we, it, there's no love lost there, you know what I mean? And mm. I, I, I can still speak to him as I would, as I would 24, you know, 22 years ago. You moved but it, to, was, it was tough, it yeah. was tough. Yeah, I mean, you moved to, to Malkita, and Malkita was, like, known, and it still is known as a... Uh, you know, jet set singing and flying all around the world and, and, and what he does. Did you, was there a difference in, I'm saying in the greatest respect, in terms of like professionalism or expectation yeah, of when huge, you got into it? What, yeah, what was that huge. like? Just everything. It's just like, look, it, the most easiest way to say this, like, he's, you know, he's, a, he's, he's sort of the king, you know what I mean? In his art or what he does, he's where he is because of what he's produced, his brand, his, his product, his materials is where he is, should be. But as a business, as his brand, as Monkey Singh, yeah, he was it's his name on everything. So when he's got a golden star behind him, it was very, very strict. And when we're on tour, there were certain rules, certain guidelines we had to follow. What was the weirdest uh, guideline? <laughs> just like just simple things like, um, you know, guys have your laughing jokes and this that the other. Don't take the uh, top, don't take the piss out of room service. You know, don't get, <laughs> don't get, don't get folding home and just like you know spending, spending like thousands on a, a room bill on the telephone and this that the other. Because don't forget, we used to ring back. You were ringing mobile phones, aren't we? Mm. So you're ringing mobile phones from your your room. You're gonna get you're gonna get stung, aren't you? What was so the biggest you bill you left? I reckon uh, Simon. I reckon you left a bad one somewhere down the line. Yeah, I did. You know, I think it was a room service bill, and I think what it was. To be really, really honest with you, I think there's a few Pringle boxes and some Lion bars <laughs> <laughs> and dairy milks, but with the Heineken cans mixed and the, a few uh, miniatures of vodka and Bacardi or whatever. I Depends did. who was in the room, you see, because yeah. then we got seven lads on tour, over here, so everyone's uh, fridges are going to get rinsed at one stage uh, in, in the room. And then when it comes to the end of the gig and then we're checking out and then the promoter's there saying, let me just do this off because I'll win the bill. And then that's when we just all put our heads down, like we put our hoods on. It's like, yeah. <laughs> and then we just get one look from the king. Oh, whose room was number 11? <laughs> it was like, we used to blame, we used to blame, you know, we used, to, we used to blame each other, really. But again, that was a part of it, really. The banter. The, really, I'm, I'm the guessing. Banter, yeah. The banter, the tour life. I mean, like Johnny, you spoke, you spoke to Johnny, you know, that. that that sort of world and this that the other spoke to all the musicians but when you're when you're abroad in a tour like you know when you're on tour with the lads he's obviously there to do a job but it's like a holiday as well and back in them days it's like you used to have a few days to kill like so you get there so you got like a day or two to chill out have a laugh and then it was a show and then you got a day after to chill so it was like a few days sort of tour but then later on, gradually, I think some people started clocking on like abroad promoters. Like, you know what? We need to fly these people in <laughs> on a Friday, do the gig on a Saturday. As soon as the gig's done, they're flying back out Sunday. So the tour started to become more shorter. And then it got to the point where we actually don't need the band. Yeah. It was just All we need is a singer and a, and a CD. It, it, it's, it's totally weird how it all happened because like... I, there was some some of us used to do tours, yeah. And some tours that we did, we used to finish work on a Friday, and we, um, we used to fly out. And then I remember getting back to work on a Monday, 
and there's like, oh, where you been this weekend? Oh, we just done a, we just went to Boston. Boston. And I said, Yeah, yeah, just done a show. We flew out Friday night, got there and come back Sunday. I'm back at work. And like, we're just doing it. Would they believe you? Yeah, no, because you had photos and stuff like yeah. that. But them days there's not photos on your phone, like so yeah, you yeah. actually physically take pictures and go to boots and develop them and stuff. But it's mad. And then the only way to do it is you take your passport to work and show here's your stamp and here's your date. I was uh, I was speaking to a, a, another singer recently um, who's agreed to come onto the podcast. Um, a, a, a real kind of a very opinionated guy. We'll just leave it at that. Um, and he and what he was what you what he said was after the kind of. Um, I think he was just kind of like playing off uh, in, and he's been very successful in, in terms of what he's done. But one thing he said, and he and he, he he said it very, very serious, was that how the touring life really aged him. It it really, really had an effect on him in terms of like uh, anxiety-wise, uh, performance-wise, uh, affecting home life and things. Was Would you, would you, um, did you start, would that, was that having an effect on you? Probably not so much because I was I was young. Younger. Yeah, yeah. And I was, I, was, I was young. And like, I think the only effects he was probably happening is probably to my family and stuff, saying that, you know, the job colour, you know, what you're doing, you, you, you're going from job to job. Because that's how we, most of like musicians that, you know, out there, we, we used to have to do that because, especially when I was in that band, we were so busy. We were doing like two tours a month. Sometimes, you know, like we'd be doing month um, tours abroad and we're doing UK shows. So, and then but actually not having a physical, like, you know, job Monday to Friday. So it, the only thing I could say with that is probably affecting my parents and um, my sisters and my family and stuff, saying, look, you know, what, what are you doing? You know, because I'm the only boy as well, so they probably had these expectations to be Dr. Singh and this, that, and the other. <laughs> but <laughs> it, it, it's just basically one of those things where I was living that high life sort of thing, and I was really intrigued in it because I was just genuinely, I was just a fan of Bhangra. You know, when I was a kid and just just being a fan of all these singers. But then, like I said to you, growing up playing door on tapes, listening to tapes. But then actually, actually, I'm on a plane now. I'm sitting in economy with eight other lads. And then in business class, I've got Malkit Singh sitting there. And then when we come off this plane, we're all going to be together in a hotel. Mm. And I was living that life, you know what I mean? And I was just like, it's too much of a buzz. And I was just like, Everything everything else around sort of just I was not interested. Not in a bad way, or like you know, I say I'm not interested in my family or whatever, but I was, but I was just living that 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 high. Like, it was just too much. The adrenaline was high, the buzz was high. We used to have gig, we used to get sheets, we used to get like them dates. I said, This is where you are for the next few months. This is where we are. So like thinking, okay, this is what we're doing you know for four months the next four months is where we're touring these are our uk dates so it was just like yeah we're all it was it was just a, it was a mad buzz and plus obviously what happens on tour stays on tour <laughs> which is a golden rule yeah but um there's a, there's a few that are actually broken that rule and i've had to cut it out believe it or not. so it's okay i'll, I'll protect it I've got videos, man. We've got not really. Videos. I haven't edited any of them. I was just, I was just trying to spice that up. Oh, yeah, that was nah, a black. We've got the videos yet. That's going to be happening. I want to get a YouTube channel made soon. Well, you, well, yeah, yeah. Just make sure you get the permission. I can give them to you, actually. <laughs> uh, everybody's asked for all the old stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the, the channels, yeah. I mean, like, uh, I think Dips Bamber does a really good job of uh, uploading quite a lot of the old yeah. um, stuff, and that I always caught myself kind of following his channel and just picking up some stuff from her did you you went from so from the next sort of three bands then you went from Malkit to so free three and yeah. then dc b21 b21 yeah then dcps yeah and did you um were they very close together in terms of like moving one to the other or were you doing some simultaneously so i think there's like three three four years stints with each really I think Mulkey was the longest. I think that was about four or five years. And then Sufri. Sufri, I just joined Sufri when uh, Buta left to join B21. Yeah. Then when I joined Sufri, it was uh, Shabba on Tolki first. But then Shabba left. And then it was um, Tubsy joined. <laughs> so then I had a few years with, a few years on the road with Sufri boys, which again, tours again. 
I can imagine like people like me, Happy, Tubsy, Gooms and Raj and everyone together, Harry as well. So, so that relationship then, like if you with somebody on like a tall like you and the Tolki player, that synergy is very, very crucial, isn't it? Yeah, when you got, yeah. When you got somebody like Tubsy that's coming on there, how 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 invaluable was that? Yeah, that was crazy. Because like again, young listening to old like old like Dola Dola, Dola, Dola this at the other and like and get real album. Another fine mess. Is, yeah, another Where fine mess from the Tumbi and then looking at listening to Tub- Tubsy and then being on stage with Tubsy and playing live door, him on door, he, no samples, just straight live, ta-ta, and then Sufi songs, Bully on this and the other. And just, I was, you know what, you up my game, man, you up my game. And like, I had the stamina, this and the other, but he just sort of says, come on, then let's have it. So it wasn't like a battle between both of us. It was like, I was learning so much from him. For every gig, I was learning something new. And I think that's the still that's the same thing still to this day. I did a gig with him last week with Mulki. And again, that's like I'm mean, like 43 now. But now how old Tubsy is probably about 65. But <laughs> <laughs> but he's he, he again, don't age. Nah, nah. He, but again, he, no, if you know what it is, he had that snake bite in it. And I reckon that snake yeah. bite as uh, there's, born, there's, there's something in it, man. It's like he's reborn, man. I swear. And then he just even last week, it's just like it was a tough gig. Come off stage and just like shook hands. I always shake hands with every musician. Like it's like a, it's like a football match, you know what I mean? And like it's like a proper workout as well. And just says, you know what? Because I call him Dog Master, and it. And I'm just like, you done it again, have you? Yeah, I think I must have must have burnt about twelve hundred calories that gig. <laughs> just bang bang. It's another level that geezer is. Where, where would you say that you were your happiest? My happiest, um, probably B21 because there was only four of us. <laughs> Joke. <laughs> no, three of us, no, five of us actually, because there's no logging around of no instruments or nothing. And it was just take two tools and that's it and plug in and play. That's probably the more happiest where it's like, yeah, you could do the gig and move on to the next gig. But um, happiest was, I like Golden Star because with so many memories, like with the whole team, uh, VJ, Bobby, Bali, um, Harry, Raju, Dolly, you know what I mean? Malky, Malky's brother, Papu. Had, it was like, when I left Maine, that was like my second family sort of thing because we spent so much time together on the road and abroad. But from there, I think when I left, when I joined B21, that again, that was more tour life. But it was without the actual life feeling because as you know, it was like we're playing with a backing track two dollies and then just see singing and ballet singing and Buta never used to sing then Buta was on the decks he was on the um, the sound engineering but I was happy there because we was touring a lot as well and but, their reaction in terms of like understanding how big they were on a world on a world, world yeah. circuit was huge there was another level and it was not what's the problem right word to use here it's probably sad because I was uh, having that live feeling with a drummer behind me and guitarists and keyboards and this and the other but it's maybe it was a night right thing for me to have a little bit of a break from the live scene and do that. Go and back to the it, DJing and it? it's like, it's like yeah, playing alongside sort of, of the DJ stuff. And it was not just me being a, like, you know, uh, just going jump into places because I want to be in the limelight all the time. It was never about that. It was just basically about using that opportunity to see the world as well because they opened so many different avenues, different doors for me. And I think from there, that's how the DCS scene came about, really, because that's one band that I really wanted to join. Because out of all the bands that were the artists I went with, band wise, I always wanted to join DCS from a, from the age of eight, nine, ten, from watching them at my uncle's weddings and this and the other, because they were just a unit. Yeah. And I used to shit on myself from them. You can speak to any musician, like back in Bagley's Zenith Nightclub, Crystals, everywhere. If, if you're in different bands and say DCS is on the lineup. And we used to like people used to watch them because they they, they were just dangerous. That's some really really solid musicians. Uh, uh, what year or what album or what period did you join them? I just joined after um, Punjab Dance Nation. Punjabi Dance Nation. So that yeah, is yeah like... yeah yeah. So they they had a really they had they was on a massive streak of gigs, and then I was leaving B twenty one. Um, then I remember after the Bendy Light Beckham thing that, that sort of time. 
I was just like, I'm going to go to join because I had a phone call from Shin. I feel like a situation with Josiah where he, he was leaving the band. He just rang me, Shin did, just out the blue. And I was just like, look, would you would you be happy to do um, a rehearsal with us? I think this come about because I covered a gig for Josiah uh, in Wales once. And B21 went on the same gig. And then I played with B21. Then I played with DCS after. Then I think from that gig because I had such a good gig with them. Um, then that's when I sort of got a call from Shin saying that, look, we're looking for a dolly. Can you help us out? And did you shit yourself just, straight away? Or <laughs> because, nah, not I because... remember my first... Nah, I, just like, I was just like, you know what? I'm ready for this. I can do this. I can smash it. And I remember my first gig was um, Nottingham. And then... Um, yeah, that ISIS? No, no, nah, nah, it's a Monday night one. And then <laughs> basically, um, I remember Paul was on dolly then. And Joggy and the rest of the crew, and I just remember because I had tracks like you know, on TDF and then Glassy the Glassy. Then I remember the Glassy the Glassy, but did the, the intro, yeah. Oh, so yeah, obviously, yeah. like he's got his, Johnny's got his bit, and then his path, then Johnny, then path, yeah, and the original. And then says, Oh, sorry, Glassy the Glassy, but the next song, you're all right for it. And I said, Let's go, man. And I just remember doing it, and it just, just rolled with it, just smashed it. And I thought, You know what. I got this. And the TDF happened. I said, I got this. Um, Punjab, you know, what's the other one? Um, all of them, really. I just had that set to it. Yeah, I, I think I think Punjab Bidans Nation had a lot, a lot of toll in it, man. And it was like, it was, yeah, yeah. It, was a, it was a dangerous start. I, me- I remember seeing, remember seeing that being, when I was at uni and um, the two bands that used to have the biggest set up world, especially from sound-wise at that time for me, was was DCS1 and Saholtas. When, so, yeah, so yeah. Is, yeah. I, I remember when uh, once this guy, <laughs> we were at uni and he, he wanted just to hear a sound check and he just wanted, to, he was obsessed with Solters. Yeah. And, uh, and when you when you used to hear their sound kicking in, it was like, he used to call it. Uh, Amazing, yeah. Yeah, he used, to, he used to smoke a lot of weed to it. <laughs> that's, 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 that's what it was. It, that's what he was after. But it was just like, you know, uh, their sound and, and the size of the groups and stuff was 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 yeah. huge, but at the same time, as that was happening, there was more of the PA stuff started to come in and that as well. Then, mm-hmm. did you feel like an endangered species at that time? As more and more those uh, those things coming because yeah. you, you're getting asked by your family, like get yourself a proper job, you know, and all of a sudden your face, you you could turn around and say, "Here's my sheet. Here's all the gigs that I'm playing." Mm. And then all of a sudden, you see the rise of all these PA uh, um, yeah. sort of acts coming up, and they don't need live musicians. Mm. That, that was in my back of my head. It was. But then I thought, you know what? Even if they do do PAs, they're still going to need a totally. So you and were the, thought, one of the safe ones, in it? Yeah, I was mostly safest in the band because no, no disrespect to none of the musicians. I mean, at the time of DCS as well. And there used to be some gigs there. The budget was probably there for some of the, even though Shinders are promote to go out to do a PA back then. It's just what's happened now, sort of thing. But there used to be some times where it would just be like just a PA and Shin would say, Look, I'll, I'll just me and the Dolly in it, sort of thing. It depends what it was, really. Mm. And and obviously, we always advertise, we always marketed to have DCS is a band in it. You go out all together and that's what you get, basically, if you want to book us them days. And then I was the sort of when it was in the back of my head, don't get me wrong, Ricky. It was, but then I thought, you know what, out of anybody, not being selfish, yeah, yeah I'm yeah. still gonna, I'm still gonna get, I'm still gonna probably get asked from a singer, oh, I've got a PA, I need a dolly, can you just jump on with me, or can you, are you free this day? So I did sort of feel a bit safe then, but in my head, I was thinking, what's happening with the other musicians? And there was a little, there was a little, like, you know, Juggly are back in the day between other musicians, like well, is taking him, man. Why can't they take me? Why is he why can't you use this on stage as well? Mm. But even just there was just a the no budget sort of thing. And did you and, and did that kind of not the, like that, that virus in terms of like that that negativity start spreading even more? Because that you always when you hear it like an older general, if you speak to someone like um, you know, if you hear the old school. They always, uh, and I'll talk about like um, Hira or Sufri, or you talk about, especially that like Aparasi, they always said that we used to encourage each other. There's a lot of unity in there. Did you start seeing the, 
the breakdown of that unity at that point? Only very, very minimal because the, some of the a lot of the musicians I was working with, they were they were doing a lot of things behind the scenes as well. So there wasn't just gigging. So a lot of the musicians were actually like producing and working in studios, working on albums, working with artists. So which was good in a way because they still had that income, not just on a gig. They got that, you know, they're still doing what they love, which is music but actually doing the other side of things, which they should have been doing, because I was all I was always about the studio life and about working with musicians at, at that sort of elite level, where they can be like, you know, recording and working on projects and working on albums. So if I was on the road doing the PA, okay, I've got my little um my little dollars in, in my back pocket there. But where these guys who are working on projects and albums have got bigger budgets from other things. So it was always, it was always like a trying to find balance. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. No, Where, I, I, and then and then like was was that the point where you started to try singing at that bit? Yeah, um, no, when did I start the singing thing? The singing thing was just on my book, at least tell you the truth. You know yeah. what I mean, Ricky? I mean, don't forget me wrong. Um, I think there was a few videos playing around. I'm, yeah, because I, I, I remember seeing the tent video. <laughs> tent video. Yeah, Rambo's pub. God, I don't know. Uh, you're you're in a tent and you're singing kind of like you're singing like Nusrat uh, songs and stuff. And then yeah, I was yeah. like, did it, was that a conscious thing to go like you wanted to become a? I know you're saying like it was a hobby thing, but was that kind of half serious to thinking like if it works, it, was it works. Half serious because a lot of people say, "Sorry, just you know, do some do some singing. You should do some singing." Because I used to do a lot of backing vocals. Okay. And then when I started doing a lot of recordings, like with Malkit, and started doing like recording with Zeus. And then being on the road with Lemba doing backing vocals and playing doll and people saying that you saw you should sing. And then I remember sometimes with DCS, she would say to me, Go on and go on sing the song on some gigs while you have a little break. And like I used to always sing like Jazzy Me, Lunar Dola. Did you remember that? Also, that went too far ago, then. No, Actually, that's I, tell the, I tell It's on YouTube that is that video. Oh when I little filmed it, yes, Sunny, and then uh, basically um, just from there, and then for later on, Bally's says like, you know, uh, you should, you should, let's do a track, and he was always a big fan of Chunky Lucky and the and I was like, go on then, even though I didn't <laughs> want to do it, like, because I was thinking of, I just wasn't ready for it, but just we just done it, we just went with it, yeah. And then we just for do the video, we, we we put our we put our money in and this that the other. And he did all right, tell the truth. He went, he went on BBC. He's played there you at go, a few man. weddings. And he still played a few. He still, he, when he was played on Raj FM, and I thought, that's it, I made it now. You made it then. And, Amber, it? and when I went to Amber Radio and this, I thought, that's it. If I'm up, 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 was at Amber Radio, so you could have been him. <laughs> <laughs> then when I seen it on TV on Brit Asia, I remember it was on Brit Asia, and I, I think Lembo was at my house one day with me and Bali, and we was going to a gig, and he was sitting here, and he was having roti. And uh, my song came on uh, Brit Asia. <laughs> what did it do? Look up at you. I just remember Lembra just cussing it, saying, What the hell is this? Because your job is all wrong. It's all dirty. <laughs> <laughs> just, just shut up again. Shut up again. You're another roti. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. Look, he left a 30 stand on my carpet. <laughs> yeah, John, Jim, John. But that, that, I mean, yeah, imagine that. Did, did you did you clock the track first and, and like try and change the channel? No, you just on because you want to show him. And then like obviously he's like Lembra's Lembra, you know what I mean? And then uh, he just said that. I just I said to him, you know, I said you're, you're right, man. I said I'm UK. Uh, <laughs> the whole for Jumby. I said I've got a few words wrong, but you know what? I said it's, we got it. We even got the song checked by other people, so they 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 even tell us as well. <laughs> got stitched up, man. No, no, that, that's the one thing in it. Like, people want to just say, "Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic, mate." That's the that's the good one in it. Is it, is, played it. We played it to Malkit on the way to a gig. I remember, and he, he listened to thirty seconds and press skip. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, "Simon, stick to the door." He goes, "Yeah." The- <laughs> You know, so um, one of the bits that I get a lot of feedback about was when Omen Hay was playing his track at, in, in a van and he's got Sukshidr Shinda and Jazzy B in the same yeah, yeah. in the same van. And he goes, the pressure, he goes, I just wanted to crawl, you know, just, just the hole to open up and just go down in it, man. No, you're saying that because the second track we did was called Nachna. And then that one, I, I sort of spent some time with it, made sure everything was okay. Yeah. 
And I remember at that time I was because um, Kaka was um, Shindar's door player. Mm. And then he needed a he needed like seven month break or eight month break. He was on some missions. I think this is when all his um um Don McSayo was all getting set up and stuff. Yeah. So I had to do seven seven eight months mission down the road, and that track was coming out. Then I remember I had the track on my phone and I said, "Look, Kaji, it's, uh, I need to have a chat with you." He goes, "What's that mean?" Because at that time I had okay as well. <laughs> so he's already having a laugh about that. Then I said, look, I've got another song. Do you want to check it out? I need your blessings. <laughs> then he oh, heard it. I heard it. And he's like, good. So I'm very good. Tap me on my shoulder. And then when he came to the Surangi piece, like, he's like, oh, very good Surangi. And that was it. And then he goes, Chal, let's go. Let's switch it off now. <laughs> and then I thought, that's it. And I've got my, I've got, I've got my one minute of fame. <laughs> <laughs> I did, the I, man himself because I shit myself don't forget I've been young you know I've been uh, I, I grew up listening to every single of his production album and for me to say to him please can you listen to this and like I thought you know what if he gives me approval I'm happy he's a scary guy man I remember like I seen him at like Rook, like uh, um, in Hands of where he's got so old I went to his house once yeah yeah and uh, I was just you know sometimes I'm nervous I like I talk really quickly and it sometimes I was there, I just, I just didn't know what to say to the guy. I was like, I wasn't starstruck, but I was like, like this geezer is played on everything. And everything. you know, when you like, as a kid, when you listen to the listen to like Jugni, someone put put it up on um, Instagram recently, um, the Jugni intro on like uh, on grassroots. And I remember religiously, I had no, I weren't even close to playing it, but you just pretend that you could play along to, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, the, the influence, and, and then if you're in your position where you've got to showcase something that you're doing, and, and you're also playing one of his main instruments as well, the tool and the pressure right. to be in there must have been madness. And Kaka, what a he's a tall master guy, man. He's, he's the most undercover retired agent ever. He goes, I, I'm not involved in any music stuff, and he's everywhere. <laughs> He's just mad, isn't it? He's living in a different world at the moment. Yeah, yeah, he's killing it, man. And he's worked hard for it, man. Fair play. When you speak to him, it, you can't even, it's just voice notes now. So it's really weird when we have a chat on their WhatsApp. It's like people got this thing about voice notes now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just give like, it, I send in the United uh, team every every time we're playing. And it's either, oh it's either happy or sad, or it's like Rick's. It goes, Rick, what we're doing, man. What we're doing, what we're doing. I go, listen, you're the main man. You're you're connected to everyone. You have a you need to get him on here, but he's got some stories to tell. Yeah, we we've discussed it. I think it's best. I think it's best that he should he shouldn't yet. <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose with his network at the point, network of people that he's working with, I think it's best if we. Uh... Yeah, can't come on, all here. What a guy! What a guy! So I, I also remember once. It, um, you know, that you were retiring on Twitter. I remember that. Was that yeah. after the singing you know, or was it before that? Yeah, I think that was after DCS sort of stint. And I thought, you know what, that's enough now. What, why Twitter. why did you why did you think at that point that 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 it was enough? Because I remember you were really active on Twitter, like brown Twitter at the time was it was new, yeah. it was coming up, it was good laugh, it was a really good vibe. No one was kicking off with anyone. It was yeah, good. Yeah. And then like you, you made that decision. How did you come up to that? I think what it was, I'll tell you the truth, I had a big, massive like, argument with one of the members of TCS band <laughs> live on stage. Sort okay. of pissed me off on stage. And then at that time, I thought, fuck this, I don't want to be in this real uh, world no more. At a wedding? Yeah, I was at a wedding, yeah. So basically, it's just like, we just had it, you know, you know, like, you just have a little bit of a tiff. So that's all that happened. So after that, I thought, that's it. I ran shit on the way home. I didn't even go back with the voice. I just went in my car. And I just like... Uh, I says, F you, F the band, I'm out of here. See you later. Pure <laughs> remember, emotion. Just like I a remember, kid. <laughs> <laughs> I remember we had to work the next day. And, oh, man, rest in peace, man. Tony Pablo, you know, uh, for Job 2000, yeah? yeah. I remember <laughs> I remember texting him saying, I have left DCS. Please put that on your message board on the Job 2000 website. <laughs> No, you know the worst thing I take from that is you've had a you had a falling out, you've gone to sleep and you woke up even more vexed. Vexed. I was at work because all the next day, like I was just like so angry. 
And I think Facebook was like sort of new and stuff like there. And then I was just like, no, that's it. Enough is enough. Imagine, and, imagine uh, if he turned around and you sent that and he's like, sorry, who's this? <laughs> <laughs> he actually put it on his message board, you know, because I actually checked like a few uh, hours later. You know, I used to, because we used to go back in the day. I don't know if you ever used to go on their website. But then for Job 2000, you just have a message board. Nah, but you know what it is? I, I only know about this because what everyone says that it was just a really, everyone used to cuss everyone on there. Yeah, was like, <laughs> there's a message board. It used to be like a subject header. So yeah. like one of the subject headers would be like um, Crystal's gig last night, Mulkeet Singh versus Sophie or something. And then there'd be like 200 comments. So you click on the comments and you read everything. Oh. Then there's one subject that says, Simon has left this year. <laughs> You know what I mean? Is he not some big superstar? Do <laughs> <laughs> you have like shit? Please come back. Stop being a baby. You had some weird, you had some weird comments like, "Where are you going? No way, never, ever." This at the other blah blah blah. Even on my Facebook, there's like, "No way, you're leaving." And I was like, "Yeah, I said I've had enough." But I did. I just, I just, I just went. I was, I was vexed for like a week or something. Then made did... up with my, uh, made up with my uh, fellow colleague. I thought you were still retired after ages. Nah. Uh, nah. Then, then just stop me. Got a phone call from just stop me. Then it just so went that way. <laughs> like, well, here we go again. <laughs> two, two weeks later, you're like Ibrahimovic, and you've gone to every every band, it? The highest transfer fees. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? It's true. Well, I joined that band. I was thinking, wow, well, you know, because I got into their rehearsal room, and the, the, the band was so the band is quite young, isn't it? So you got like JJ, you got you know, looking, um, Ball and Mads. I think drumming at the time was Bobby, but Bobby was one of the geek. So, me and Bobby, like, we're like, we got like old school between us, yeah. So, they had a bit of old school, and they were all younger, like Jazzy's young as well. And then, um, what's he called, man? Because he, 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 like, he had a fantastic start, didn't he? And, uh, like, I, I say still career, uh, Jack, he did like 20 years. Is he almost 20 years now? Just don't know. Um, I don't think it's 20 years. Hang on. Let me just get more years. Where's him? Where's his buddy dead? Was that was his first? No, it's no, is it Omen here, wasn't it? Jin John. Yeah. Oh, I'm not gonna say yeah at this point, just to work out what it is, but but his grand shaker, I think he was on. And then he did oh, his, here uh, we go. Um... I'm getting uh, his uh discography here. <laughs> so we got Nah, he's... That's what I need. I need one of those for all the artists I played for. I think that would be good. Well, we've got Gabru in 2009. All right, let's just give him like he's been here like 15 years mm-hmm. in the scene. So, like, you know, longevity wise, he's he's done brilliant. Mm-hmm. And being in a young group at that point, what how was it then in terms of being that? Did you feel there was more energy in there because it was a younger band? Yeah, just good because like the musicians. Obviously, looking like an upcoming percussionist. I think, I think before then, I think he was doing a lot of tour work with Harvey and stuff, Jazz's brother. But I think he's in Dips Band. I think they had a band, was it Serious Seven, Seven? or something? Oh, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think he was with them guys and stuff. Mads, Ball. I don't know if Ball was with them. And then Jazz Jarl, who was like a, a new Manish. keyboard player. Was Manish in there? No, Manish was it. Oh, yeah, he was with them, Dipsy's band. But then, um, yeah, because Rambo, when I left DCS, I got Rambo into uh, I got Rambo into DCS. I said that you know, really good totally. I really got on with Rambo. I was like, Is this why you were, like as you made up? Yeah, that it was the. I was just like a party. Yeah, and I just like because uh, I seen Rambo. I think a few gigs that I couldn't do with DCS, and I just really like Rambo style of playing. I just thought he just like he's young, and uh, I think he just adapted to playing that live sort of door with the band. And I just thought he's, he'll be really good. He'll just fit in really well uh, into DCS. Because I think that tent video that he was on about, because we some, sometimes after DCS gigs, we used to go to Rambo's um, dad's pub in Birmingham by the mm. city ground mm. back in the day. And we used to end up there and just having like mayor falls and stuff. And that's why I got close to Rambo. And just like Rambo, I think, you know, you, you could do something with DCS. I think, you know, I'm leaving, get you in there. And that's how it happened, really. So it's like a smooth transition. Mm-hmm. And, I tried that. and I didn't really leave him like looking, scouting for a dolly. I sort of got him in there. And he went to Singapore and stuff, started touring and stuff with him. So I was really happy for him. 
and like today he's, he's doing really well yeah he is, he is. Stuff. and then um, yeah so we're, we're really tight and then when I joined Jazz's band I thought you know what this, we've got some really really young musicians here but they're so talented and like you know I've got so many ideas and so me and Bobby we like sort of took a back steps back seat sort of thing listening and stuff but then when I wanted to input my things in there and that they, they, it was really amazing because they're like really listen as well and I just felt like um they had that sort of respect as well but I, I respected them because I still do now like you know they're really really amazing musicians but then working with jazz as a vocalist so going from Shin then going to Jazz Thummy you know what I mean they're sort of like Jazz Thummy and is young but from what what I knew of jazz and what I've seen of jazz, I've never seen any young UK singer at that sort of time doing what jazz was doing. Yeah. And but he's not just one of those guys that just grabs a mic and chill take the wally. But he's one of these guys that knows his keys. He's done his homework. There's a lot of behind the scenes. There's yeah, a lot of, yeah, a lot of pa- doing those. So he was in that same sort of school anyway. Like from the start, actually from the Shin days and. Jazz and that like that's that, that that sort of circle, and, and but yeah. So when I worked with them, we was on the road again. Then we did a few tours, and then from there it was just all right. Just kept it going and stuff. So and where, did, yeah, bit, bits and bobs from there. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, no. I mean, so like from 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 jazz's bit, then um, you know, you've probably been like twenty years strong in terms of that that it, yeah in, in that in that bit. Did you start feeling uh, that you were naturally slowing down and, and looking to go into something else then now? Because at the moment yeah. you're you're kind of a super connector now, aren't you, with with the uh, with your new venture? What's that like? Just give us a Simon says, yeah, yeah, so it's good. So basically that you know, because you know, so Ricky, like I've been in this game and this events game and this at the other gigging and partying the weddings, regardless of what the, the event is. But I want I, I'm, I like I like to, I'm a sort of people person sort of thing. I like to make Things like to project manage things, yeah. Even like I was to work with artists and stuff like work with Magid and um, Shin and stuff like that. When we're at the actual uh, venues or gigs, I'll be that sort of person to speak to the actual clients. This at the other, find out what the actual itinerary is for the day, bit of background stuff, and just you know, like your sort of admin side of things. I really like that. I like to like you know mm. connect people and stuff. But I just had this sort of brainwave that like because I'm. I've seen it so many years and years where, like, there's a lot of people. We used to, the only reason I've done this is, like, my motto is help people save their money within their budget sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. So, for example, you're having a party and you say, look, I've got this much money, this is my finance. What can you do for me? I'd be that sort of person. So, look, let me speak to my suppliers and we work with these sort of people and get you everything. And they say, look, well, Ricky's given me five grand to work with. My job is to give you um, four grand or four and a half, four and a half grand, um, your budget will give you five hundred pound back, or give you a grand back. Then I say, "Sorry, how you done that, wicked?" But that's just my network. That's my, um, you know, my links sort of thing. I'm not going to say to you, "Hello, there, here, I've got your thousand pound, Rick. Cheers, nice one, thanks for that." I say, mm. "Here you go, brother. Here's your grand back." And you're going to say, "Thanks, sorry," but then I'll get my recognition and whatever I get from my suppliers because I'll be giving them work. Is this? Is this the way that, in terms of like kind of summarizing your career, that it's come up to this point, or do you think that yeah. this, this might be just kind of the stopgap, or you think you know what it, you know, like quite you you'll get some musicians who might open up a school or having a classes and teaching. Mm. That. Did you want to go down that line, or you just thought this is just more I, me that I need to do? Me, it's like I like to be involved. I like to project manage work mm. and stuff, and but for me to teach somebody. Um, I tried it a few times and for me I just I don't know what it is I don't know because I'm a Virgo or something like that I'm very <laughs> patient I, I don't know what it is like if you're not getting it I've, I haven't just got the patience it's like I could teach someone to drive and then they keep on stalling the car I just like I just like no okay it's not going to happen I don't know why that is I think because maybe because I've self-taught myself mm sort of thing I've not actually sat with someone who slapped my wrist and this at the other or you know I spent hours getting mentoring this at the other I've done mine from my own back listen to um, music on um, on the tapes and CDs but later on then YouTube came into it listen to YouTube concerts and this at the other you know observing that's education to me you know what I mean and watching other bands play it was like I still watch them but I used to be learning as well 
was, you know, the rhythm and this, that, the other, I'd be learning, we'd all be going here, sinking in my head, and then tapping that thing on, on my fingers and this, that, the other, on the tables. So when I try and teach somebody, I tried it a few times and I just thought, you know what, I don't know what it is. I just haven't got that patience. Don't get me wrong, there's been some people think, yeah, but I'd rather just give advice, say, this is what you do, this is how you play. But I would say my advice is just always play from here and from the heart. Mm. Don't worry about too much about being technical, this, that, the other. Just go with the flow. That's why I've always, I think that's why I've been so successful in my playing wise and this, that, the other, because I just meditate. It's meditation to me. I just let it, it all comes from here. And what do you feel is like when you look at the, the today's scene from your opinion? What's what, what's your opinion on that? At the moment, today's scene, it's a bit, it's all over the place really because you're getting a bit of this technical, you know, this, this new world of, you know, online sort of world, which is great because mainstream's doing it. But I see that when it comes to like actually performance wise, I'm not seeing what we used to see many years ago, but maybe the generation has now changed. But like, I think I'm in, I'm in like, you know, somebody up really well because we've not had him. There's no, there's no real musicians out there. Is there really? Because I think about it down I, I had a good chat with like um, Harry, I had a good chat with Bally and this, you know, other fellow, fellow musicians. I said, I'm still 43 now. I don't want to be on stage doing these gigs. Only the grey hair? The grey hair is number one, but, I, you know, there's the still players out there that just got that young, fresh stamina, the quicker, the faster, this and the other. Even though, okay, I can still do it. I mean, I can still do a set tomorrow if I need, need to do it, but... Do I want to be there at this time in my life? You know, what I mean, doing that um, with the Pongra band. That's no disrespect to anybody that's doing it. It's like I watched Kajan Mal on TikTok the other day. He's 70, you know what I mean? And he's like yeah. saying, look what he's doing. He goes to the gym, mental health. He's wearing that backpack with weights on, weights on his wrist. He says, all oh, the door players, hold your door on there, build your stamina. He said, he goes, I'm 70, so you should do it, which is great. You know what I mean? But for myself, I just felt like when I see stuff happening now, it's not what it was then. But I have to just go with the generation today. I'm like I'm saying that there's no, there's no new bass players, there's no new guitarists, there's no new talkie players. I mean, the only freshest, newest talkie player I can say is like you know I was looking like I'm saying, and for me looking is just an, a story. You know what I mean? He's just gonna, he's just gonna go that way. Just, yeah. Higher and higher because his ability playing from when I seen him back in the day, another level. But again, he, you know, he, he, his dog, his percussion. What else is happening? Like, there's no other, there's a few keyboard players I've seen, but nothing happening. There's no new bass players. There's no, and, but what's going to happen? Do you feel that in combination with a lot of the biggest songs that have come out don't necessarily have? Um, a lot of uh, yeah. uh, old uh, Punjabi instruments and stuff in there. That you think, do you no. think it's a perfect storm for it to kind of take that another further dip down? Yeah, it's like my son is my son's ten. My son's ten years old, and like he listens to whatever I put in the car, really. But then sometimes he's got his own little playlist, and he put Brown one day on his playlist. Yeah, AP to Law. I mean, look how old that song is now. What well, is yeah. it? About a year, two years old, probably something like that. Yeah, I think it's about. Two, three years now, maybe two years. Yeah, so that, yeah. that's playing in my car now. I mean, I, when that used to come on Dipsy's show, uh, Asian Network, I used to hate it. I used to think, what this song? And then everybody was saying, yeah, I, I still hate it now. But then now, <laughs> I was in my car, and I'm like, yeah, it's all right. Because then there's a little story about these two guys. I'm seeing what they've just done in the UK two months ago. They've came here, just sold out four or five arenas, cleared up. The generations of the 60s, 70s, even people, kids are in there like 15, 16, 17, 18, yeah? You've seen it yourself, yeah? Mm -hmm. Look what they've just done. These guys, yeah? Uh, more story, money that everyone put together. Yeah, but I would never have known their story because when I've seen, sort of following their sort of story, what they've done, yeah. like they left India to go to, was it Canada, mm -hmm. working in petrol stations, gave eight, nine demos to people, told them to piss off, and then release this track and then next minute know the internet sensations you know what I mean they're coming to the UK then you, you everybody's just like who the what's going on here these guys have just came here 
driving around in the jeep wagons, scooting this at the other, yeah, sold out arenas. No interviews. Yeah, no interviews, no press, nothing like that. Generation is between your 15 and your 18s, yeah? So what chances, uh, what, what's going on with these new music, what, what's these musicians thinking that are they just going to be bedroom uh, bedroom studio studio people? Mm. Which I know a lot of youngsters, I know quite a few kids myself that um, are producing tracks, producing loops for DJs, producing tracks, this, that, the other. They're 17, 18, some of them are 16. Which is good. Yeah, but obviously. Come on, the, come on the band scene, come on the live stage. What are you seeing? Are you seeing anything new? I've not seen anything personally. And the youngest person I can think of, like I said, top of my head, I don't know whether, because it's late now or something, but I can only think of a youngster who's done something, is looking. But saying that, I'm just saying that because he's looking, but you got got, um, what's his name, Vish, you know, um, who's young. Yeah. He's doing stuff, you know, where he's playing the blood. He played, uh, he played with Hira the other week. Keyboards, can you believe it? How old is he? He looks, he looks about fifteen. <laughs> yeah. And look at his dad. His dad is DIP. You know what I mean? But look at him. Okay, how young he is. He's done them. Um, uh, he did them uh, online videos. We you know do talk, talk, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable compilations and stuff. I think that was one of the things over social media uh, over COVID where people were just doing these little grids where the one was playing a one. It's the same person. They're playing different instruments and putting them all together. Exactly, yeah, but look at this guy, look at him. I mean, Talent. I said looking, yeah, okay, but maybe this guy is probably he's a lot younger than looking, yeah, but what he's doing, he's I've done a few um, shows with Graham, acoustic and stuff, but what he's done there to play with Hira as a kid, mm-hmm. yeah, when I mean, Hira were probably cool and deadly days, he, he, he probably wasn't even born. No, well, definitely not. But Diamond's a Hira, you know what I mean? But Props, fair play to his dad and stuff. You know, encouraged, gave that encouragement. His parents gave that encouragement. But I, I, maybe I'm, I'm going to look back at this later and think, you know what? Shit, I forgot about that person. Just as it happened. No, no. I, I think, I think, I think the part. In, in fairness to you, it's it's what the kind of thing that we're kind of getting at is is that you're there's only where there was a bunch of people coming through. Now you're just now it's just kind of singulars, just you know one or two odd ones, kind of just sipping through the net. But I think that it, you know whether that's a good thing or whether it's a bad thing, you know only time will tell. Kind of th- uh, mm. ultimately uh, where it goes through. But I think it's important in terms of having people like yourself uh, and others um, around you to kind of share that experience because knowing mm. some of the lessons where you what, what you've had, the experience. Um, the the right decisions, you know, not to leave DCS just because of that, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, you know, ju- you know, just 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 the other just the other kind of guidance is is really important, um, and 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 we'd miss it if 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 people like you weren't there. That's true, but like I'm there behind the scenes sort of thing mm-hmm. when I want to be there. But like now, it's like I said, somebody sent me that video of uh, B21 in Vancouver. I think it was, and I was on stage with them. And I think I posted that video and I says got the t-shirt, seen it all. Mm. I still got that t-shirt to tell you the truth. Probably, it doesn't fit me now, but I've still got <laughs> that B21 t-shirt. And like I got like, like, a lot of t-shirts. I got Mukit one, I got Jazz Dummy one, the Legends Band one, this that the other. But I'm just gonna keep them all. Just frame them up, man. Frame them up. <laughs> Don't know about the framing. <laughs> Sorry, this is as, as you you might have caught it once, you know, in the background, but um, on the bandwagon, we give an opportunity for uh, the guest to basically either jump on a bandwagon or jump off a bandwagon or just basically get something off the chest. So um, this is your kind of your opportunity, really. Is there anything that you want to discuss? Anything I want to discuss? I think just basically there just needs to be a bit more unity within the, the, the actual industry. There's a lot of people that are doing um, other ventures um, within the industry, it doesn't have to be music; it could be anything. And and like you know, your views and your shares and your likes and all that shit. Yeah, social media, you see. But then when someone's doing something and you spend years and years as in the industry, like industry folk, I think people should share and support. You know what I mean? That's all I've got to say, because that's the only thing that's on my chest. When I see 
my mates, who are my mates who I can drink with and this, that, the other. But then they'll say, well, why haven't you shared or liked my post or why do you do something? And then I can hear someone say, well, you didn't do his one. You didn't do his one. I think that unity is sort of sort of broken sort of thing. Everybody, there's, there's a massive pie. There's a massive cake. Everyone can have a slice, a slice of it. Slice, slice. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah but I yeah. think um, for me, get off my chest, people need to stop the bullshit and just be real, yeah. And just basically, you, you're not going to get very far if you just want to be selfish, yeah. I think people should just stay happy, stay blessed and just, you know what I mean? have that unity back what it used to be doesn't matter what band you're playing doesn't matter who you're with um, doesn't matter what songs are doesn't matter you know what just just share support somebody can say to me oh did you hear that person's track it was shit wasn't it did you hear the vocal on that track and they think come on man the guy's doing something or the girl's doing something yeah mm. or oh, what's he doing doing this why is he doing this for he's doing it because he wants to do it or she wants to do it. You know, we've got to stop the juggly and this, that, the other. Just, you know what? Life's too short, man. And I think the last two years should have been a lesson for everyone. Just let get on with it and just, you know, get that unity back. Yeah. Social That's media, all I can say. Social media politics is, is one of the worst kind of inventions around. You should do what I do, like, I don't even look at who's looked at my story. I know there's people, I've got mates of mine who look at stories and, and actually remember they shared this that I can't remember shit, man. I could barely remember what I did yesterday. So it's it's a kind of a blessing, really. Just like support everyone, be happy and, you know, That's not it. take it personal. That's it. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of people should have that, you know, I mean, same sort of, um, in what's that, what's that word on the film, sort of... Um, Conscious, like, the thinking Conscious, in it. Yeah. In that way, they yeah. should have that same way of thinking because the last two years should have sort of made everybody wake up a bit, yeah. Because, yeah. like, just like that, everything can just be gone. Just be gone. Simon, and just like that, time is just going to be gone. And that is also, again, it will, you know, we've we've had many discussion and, uh, you know, this will, any venture or anything you want to push, this will always be there for you. So um, I'd love to get you back on and, and, and uh, you know, get back into some of the stories but really appreciate you taking time and uh coming on here now nah, thanks for having me rick it's been amazing <laughs> it's been amazing to tell a few stories